Lunge to the back with resistance band level one. In the lunge to the back with resistance band level one, you will attach a band to a solid support structure, as you can see here, right? It's a solid support structure. It's not going to fall. It's not going to be pulled down. It's not going to hit you, the exerciser, or fitness doctor practitioners, your client, right? So that's the first step, is have attach the band. And simply, um, let's take this off really quick. So atta to attach the band, you simply take a long power band that's the right resistance for you, so somewhere between medium or light to heavy, just depending on your strength with the lunge. And what you'll do is you'll simply wrap it around the bar, put the loop, put one side of the band through the loop on the other side, and then it stays attached. And we want this, let's come here, Matt. So we want this to be about eight inches to a foot and a half lower than waist height depending on how tall you are. So if, if you're shorter, if you're in the 5'2", five, 5'3", five, range or somewhere near, you're gonna want it about six inches lower than you. If you're as tall as Matt is and closer to 6'3", then you wanna have the band about a foot, foot and a half lower than you. You're gonna place the band around the ASIS, right? Which is basically the very top uh, bony structure of the pelvis. So we're gonna place that there, and then you're going to walk forward definitely far enough so that when you step back, there's no bars or anything that you could step on that would twist your foot, twist your ankle. That could become very dangerous. So you do wanna make sure that you're far enough away that you're not gonna hit any of the support structure when you step back. That's usually in the neighborhood of two feet. Depending on how tall you are, it could be up to three feet away. So for Matt, we're about three feet away. And what we're going to do is have the feet perfectly parallel at hip width, as you can see here. It's right in line with Matt's hip, this greater trochanter of the upper femur there. Feet parallel. Then when he steps back, he's going to do, or you're going to do your best to keep all the load on the front leg. Okay, so let's go ahead and step back. Good. So all the load, as much as he can, is on this leg. Yes, he has to step back and support a little bit with the right leg, but he's trying to minimize that. So then what we're going to do is have that knee directly over the ankle. So from the side view here, you can see that the knee is directly over the ankle, that the pelvis is neutral, that the torso is upright, vertically upright, pelvis is neutral. When we stand, let's go ahead and stand. Good, and let's do it again, come back. Good, so when we stand, so in this case, let's actually come up and then go to the other side so we can get a better side view over here. Good, so again, pelvis neutral, when we're back, spine stays vertical the entire time with pelvis neutral. When you stand, you're gonna think about pulling this knee backwards and pushing the hip forward. So it's gonna be these forces that bring your body up. Let's go ahead and execute that. Good, so he's really recruiting in the glute and really thinking about pulling that knee back to stand in upright position. When you're upright from the side angle here, you wanna have the torso totally vertical. Again, pelvis neutral. Then during all the motion, let's keep the pelvis neutral and the spine upright. Let's hit a couple more reps. Nice, and one more. Good, awesome. And then as we go up the kinetic chain, we wanna have the ear in line with the middle of the shoulder or the ear hole or external meatus in line with the middle of the shoulder. So we have a good alignment in the spine, pelvis is neutral, and we're focusing on driving from that heel. So let's do one more time. So along with thinking about recruiting the glute and the knee and pulling that knee backwards, what you're going to be doing is placing all the pressure on the heel. So if we step back with the left and we're using the right, we're going to be forcing a lot of load through that right heel. Or if we step back with the, the right, we're going to be placing all the load on the left heel. And that's the way you do a perfect lunge to the back with resistance band, level one.
Last but not least, and really most importantly, the thing that always goes wrong in sport mechanics and lifting mechanics in the lunge specifically or lunge type positions is this. First, you already know to put all the pressure in the heel. But what happens next is between your second and third toe, you want the patella to perfectly align. So like a bullseye in a gun, okay? So like the sights in a gun aiming at a bullseye, just like this, right? Perfectly aligned. Next, you want the patella tendon to be in line with the acetabulum, which quite simply is the hip joint. So right center of this long bone, your femur and your upper leg, you want this to stay totally straight, totally straight, and then coming up the kinetic chain, next what you want is you want this pelvis to be perfectly aligned. So you want it to be perfectly horizontally aligned. What you would not want is this side to be dropping in what we call a Trendelenburg position. So any of those things causes shear stress, whether at the ankle, at the knee, at the hip, at the lower back, it begins to twist and bend and grind the joints, can even cause, begin to cause disc protrusion in the spine by having that Trendelenburg position in the pelvis. So very important, everything's perfectly aligned there. Up through here, straight line there, and straight line here.